today we are going to see a method called as block convolution it is a kind of uh, example we are going to learn today where we are going to filter long data sequences using dft okay uh, what matters for us uh, when we have an input a uh, given to a system with impulse response h of n input x of n then its output is linear convolution oh, okay so circular convolution and linear convolution we compared in the last video uh, that we have seen what matters for us is linear convolution so taking linear convolution is like uh, whatever input you are giving to a system it is a filtered output which we are obtaining as a linear convolution but when the data input to the system is very long sequence you have to process that data so uh, when we are going to get the linear convolution using circular convolution we have see, see, seen the zero padding method so we have to add a lot of zeros uh, uh, zeros according to the length of your impulse response and you have to take that uh, matrix uh, ma matrix multiplication so it is very computationally uh, inefficient uh, when we are going to uh, multiply such a large matrices so what is the remedy for this we have to break the input sequence into small small blocks and then perform uh, circular convolution we have studied the property of circular convolution that in frequency domain it is multiplication in time domain uh, we are getting that multiplied output sequence when we are getting idft of that sequence we are getting the circular convolution okay so that is the benefit of using circular convolution so why not to use circular convolution in this problem okay so we'll take one example and see how to break a long sequence into small small sequences and how to find the output for linear convolution of that long sequence with the impulse response h of n so for example we have taken x of n like this a long sequence and h of n it is the impulse response of the system and we have to find y of n so there are two methods for this block processing or block convolution these are called as overlap and add method and overlap and save method okay so first we'll see overlap and save method first we'll decide a block length block length l is equal to let us take it 3 so this is equal to block length length of h length of h we'll take as m and we take m minus 1 uh, zeros or the previous length so this will be equal to in our case 2 m minus 1 so the sequence that we are going to actually perform circular convolution with h of n the sequence broken part of x of n that length of that sequence is equal to l plus m minus 1 so it will be 3 minus 3 plus 2 so our total sequence length will be of 5 so for the first method overlap and save we take the sequences as so we'll first what we'll do we form the blocks of 3 like this okay and this one okay so in this first method overlap and save you have to take m minus 1 0 here m minus 1 means 2 so you have to take m minus 1 zeros first then take 3 samples l 3 minus 1 0 ok then in the second sequence what do you put take the previous m minus 1 samples so it is minus 1 0 next new 3 samples 1 3 2 x 3 of n again previous 2 samples 3 
2 next new samples 0 1 and 2 x4 of n 1 2 and that 1 and you can pad extra zeros to match the length is equal to 5 also h of n is 0 padded because we want to perform circular convolution on the sequence now for each sequence we will find partial output ok so for y1 of n is equal to x1 of n circularly convolved with h of n we will write our answer here first we will form circulant matrix for x1 of n this is equal to 0 0 3 minus 1 0 0 0 0 3 minus 1 minus 1 0 0 0 3 3 minus 1 0 0 0 h of n in column format so this will be equal to minus 1 0 3 2 2 okay so we'll write it here minus 1 0 3 2 2 y2 of n is equal to x2 of n circularly convolved sorry h of n so the matrix circulant matrix for this minus 1 0 1 3 2 so we will form a circulant matrix like this Zero one three two minus one 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 zero zero. We we'll calculate this three plus two minus one four. Sorry, one four one. 0, 4 and 6. So, this sample is 4, 1, 0, 4, 6. Now, next is for y3 of n is equal to x3 of n. Circularly convolved with h of n. Circulant matrix for x3 of n. 3, 2, 0, 1, 2. 3, 2, 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 0, 1, 2, sorry, oh, I missed here, so it is 1, and our, this is also 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, let me check it is correct, 3, 2, 3, 2, 0, 1, 2, this two, three, two, zero, one. Okay. Two, one, two, three, two, zero. Okay. So this is wrong. Zero, one, two, three, two, two, zero, one, two, three. Okay. Four oh, is right. Now first 3, this is 6, this is 7, this is 5, this is 3 and last one is also 3. So let the samples here, 6, 7, 5, 3, 3 and the last one, output. The partial output y4 of n is equal to x4 of n convolved with h of n 
Now circulant matrix for X4 one to one double zero one to one double zero zero one to one zero 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 one to one okay then one zero zero one two two one zero one sorry zero one 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 zero zero okay one one three four three and one okay so we'll write it here one three four three one okay we'll rub this to write the final output from these four sequences we have to discard first n minus 1 samples from each of the partial output so you have to take only the last few remaining samples discarding this so we are discarding the first n minus 1 samples and we are saving the rest of the samples from each each of the partial output that's why this method is called as overlap and save method so y of n the final output can be written as y1 of now 0 and y1 of 1 we are leaving y1 of 2 y1 of 3 y1 of 4 then y2 of 2 because we are leaving these two samples from y2 of n so y2 of 2 y2 of 3 and y2 of 4 Y two of four, then y three of two, y three of three, y three of four, y four of two, y four of three, y four of y four of four. Okay, so we'll write the final samples here for y one of y of n. Samples are three, two, two, zero, four, six, five, three, three, and four, three, one. Okay. So this is a final output y of n. So it is the linear convolution of x of n with h of n. Now we'll see overlap and add method. Again, for simplicity, block length is equal to three. M minus one is equal to two. Three minus two. So, say sequence length is equal to L plus M minus one. That is equal to five. So, again, we are going to uh, get length five sequences. We'll break x of n into x four of n, x two of n like this. So, you have, what you have to do in this? Take first l samples three minus one zero and pad n minus one zero zero. In each sequence, do like this: x two of n is equal to. Now the second one one three two double zero. X three of n is equal to. Zero one two double zero x four of n is equal to one zero 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 and h of n with zero padding in the similar manner. Okay, now like the previous one method, we'll find y one of n. Which is equal to x one of n circularly convolved with h of n. What is x one of n? It's equal to three minus one zero 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 three minus one zero 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 three minus one zero 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 three minus one minus one zero zero 
and 0 and this 3 x h of n ok so this will become 3 2 2 3 2 2 minus 1 and 0 so this is your y1 of n so we will drop this don't require this now so y1 of n is equal to 3 2 2 minus 1 0 ok now y2 of n is equal to x2 of n circularly convolved with h of, h of n so let us form a circulant matrix for this 1 3 2 double 0 0 1 3 2 0 0 0 1 3 2 2 0 0 1 3 3 2 0 0 1 and 1 1 1 0 0 so this calculation will become 1 1 4 this is 6 then 5 and then so we will write here y2 of n the sequence 1, 4, 6, 5 and 2. Now y3 of n is equal to x3 and h of n circularly convolved. Let us form circulant matrix first this 0 1 2 0 0 0 0 1 2 0 0 0 1 and 2 2 0 0 0 1 1 2 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 let us see what is output this is 0 this is 1, this is 3, 3 and 2. So let us write here y3 of n is equal to 0, 1, 3, 3 and 2. y4 of n is equal to x4 of n circularly converted with h of n. x4 is 1 0 0 0 0 ok 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 so let us see uh, it is 1 1 1 0 0 identity matrix like formation is here so it will be 1 1 and this is our y4 of n okay. now we will write the final output for this we have to add uh, the last n minus 1 samples of this first sequence into the first n minus 1 samples this n minus 1 samples and this m minus 1 sample. So you have to write uh, the sequences in a particular fashion. So let us write y1 of n is equal to 3, 2, 2, minus 1, 0. So this samples must be in front of these samples for y2 of n like this. 1, 4, 6, 5, 2. 5 and 2. Now this samples must be in front of this two samples for y3 of n. So we will write it like this. 0 1 0 1 3 3 2 and then y4 of n. So these two samples last two samples must be in front of this sample y4. 1, 1, 
वन जीरो जीरो सो फाइनली यू नीड टू ऐड दो सैम्पल्स ऐड दिस इंटू दिस दिस इंटू दिस ऐड दिस टू सैम्पल्स ऐड दिस इंटू दिस लाइक दिस यू हैव टू डू एडिशन राइट ऑल द अदर सैम्पल एज इट इज सो दिस इज अ फाइनल वाई ऑफ एन विच इज इक्वल टू थ्री टू टू देन एट दिस वन माइनस वन जीरो दिस इज फोर एंड दिस इज सिक्स देन फाइव प्लस जीरो फाइव दिस थ्री एंड दिस थ्री देन दिस एडिशन फोर देन दिस एडिशन थ्री देन वन देन जीरो देन जीरो सो यू कैन हैव द फाइनल आउटपुट लाइक दिस सो यू कैन कंसिडर दिस जीरो और नॉट सो दिस ओके सो यू कैन कंसिडर दीज जीरो और नॉट एज इट इज जीरो पैडिंग सो दिस इज द एक्चुअल आउटपुट वाई ऑफ एन फॉर लीनियर कन्वोल्यूशन ओके सो यू हैव सेल टू मेथड फॉर फिल्टरिंग लॉन्ग डेटा सिक्वेंसेज यूजिंग डी एफ टी यूजिंग सर्क्युलर कन्वोल्यूशन यू हैव ब्रोकन द डेटा इन टू स्मॉल सिक्वेंसेज एंड देन परफॉर्म सर्क्युलर कन्वोल्यूशन यूज दिस टू मेथड्स overlap and add method and overlap and save method to find the linear convolution of a really long sequence with the impulse response of the system